All right, so this is an example of our return to run program. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're talking about returning to run programs is that I have to program this for a lot of various different types of individuals. There's many different starting points. Some people haven't ran in years. Some people are very high level runners and never stopped running, but are dealing with an injury and trying to get back to running quickly uh, to return to running for a 5K marathon or a race that they have upcoming. So again, this is just a very general guideline. What we're gonna do here is talk about the principles first because it's the principles that are most important. And if you understand the principles, then you can progress yourself at any rate. And it doesn't matter your ability or your injury scenario, you know the principles which will help you understand what you should and should not be doing. Now principle number one, and perhaps the easiest principle, but it's very subjective to the individual, is that anytime you perform a run, you should not wake up the next day and think to yourself, because of pain, I do not want to repeat that run again today. Now, you could wake up the next morning, you'd be like, I'm muscular sore, I have soreness from that workout, um, and I may not want to do that workout. It doesn't mean that you need to do that same running workout the following day. It's just an easy subjective question that you can ask yourself to indicate if you're progressing too quickly into an issue that might eventually become a problem. So if you wake up the next day and you think to yourself, because of pain, I would not want to repeat that run again today if I had to, then you are progressing yourself too quickly through a return to run program. Muscle soreness is okay as long as it's within reason but pain that makes you think that you do not want to repeat the same workout two times in a row is an indicator that you might be pushing yourself a little bit too quickly in this process. Now in this return to run program, we're only suggesting you are running one to two times per week, but many people will decide that they want to run three to four times per week. The second biggest rule is that when you are progressing your mileage or the time that you are running, there are three variables that you must consider and you only want to progress one variable at a time. It's when you progress two variables at the same time, that's when you can run into issues. Again, now these rules can be broken uh, depending on your previous level of ability prior to injury, depending on your injury, uh, and depending on your past running history. So those three variables are the time or distance. It's, it's kind of the same thing. We have to track how long you are running for. Number two is the frequency. So how many days a week are you running? What type of rest frequency are you getting in there? And then third is the speed of which you run at. So those are the three variables that you can manipulate and progress over time. But again, if we're talking about ideals, you're only progressing one of these variables at a time. When you start to progress two, that's when you can start to run into issues, especially if you're doing that on a frequent basis. When you start to progress all three at once, then again, we start having more and more likelihood that a flare up could happen, especially if you're doing this over and over again. So that's the second thing that you must be aware about is those three variables. Now, when we actually get down here to our running program, what you'll see again, this is just a two day a week uh, plan, but if you were to do three and four days, you could just keep cycling through this. In general, what you should see throughout your week is that the week ebbs and flows almost like a wave. You don't want to continue escalating the runs over the course of a week. You want to alternate between a moderate to a high to a low, back to a moderate to a high to a low, something along those lines where the intensity of your workout is changing throughout the week in month. You should notice this wave like effect to your training where it's cycling back and forth. And again, ways to create increase challenge or decrease the challenge of the workout is you manipulate these three variables. Now level one is a very basic return to jogging program. What we're gonna do is three minutes 
of jogging with one minute of walking and you're going to repeat that for five rounds which means in total you're going to get 15 minutes of jogging in five minutes of walking that's a 20 minute total day right there now this is a pretty general starting point if you've had someone who have has never run or hasn't run for years maybe you're just doing one or two rounds so three minutes jog one minute walk you can start that basic i've started that basic many times with people who don't have a history of running and then progress them through that point to where they get, then get to that five rounds total. But if you can't jog for three minutes straight, then you probably shouldn't be starting a return to jog or a return to run program at this current moment in time. Now, day, day two is very similar. It's a two minute jog and this time a three minute walk. And you're going to do that for four rounds. Now you can utilize this as your low day, less intense of a workout, or if you're feeling good, this is something where we can push one of the variables. We can push the speed here a little bit more as you feel comfortable um, because we're going for a shorter period of time and we're getting a longer break. In totality here, you're going to get eight minutes of jogging and 12 minutes of walking still totals 20 minutes so again you are keeping the time and distance the same and then again it's up to you how frequent you might be doing this which would be one to two times a week or three to four times a week and again we want to limit the the changes of variables all at once we want to just we want to try to just manipulate one variable at a time but again inevitably Sometimes there'll be moments in time where you have two variables that change or maybe even three variables that change at once. But again, when you do that, you want to limit the amount of times that you do that. If you keep doing that day in and day out, then again, you're going to be progressing yourself too quickly. You're going to run into a problem. Now, once we've been able to complete that level comfortably, waking up the next day feeling like if you had to, you could repeat that run again and be confident in doing so without feeling like you're going to re-injure yourself, then we can progress on to level two, which is now a five-minute jog, one-minute walk, and we're going to do that for five minutes. It right, gives you 25 total minutes of jogging, and you get five minutes of walking, which is a 30-minute total day right here on day two much similar as before is three minutes jog three minute walk for five rounds so now we're getting 15 minutes of jogging and 15 minutes of walking now again depending on the frequency at which you run say you're doing this four times a week instead of just two times a week what this return to run program might look like is you're doing level you're doing level two level one level two level one you could repeat and cycle through level two the whole entire time but again if you're feeling like you need more rest if you're feeling like you need to take it easier because the symptoms have a little bit of volatility going on you're more than welcome to maneuver yourself back and forth between these levels you don't have just because you're at level two doesn't mean you have to stay at level two you can ebb and flow between these levels now once we feel comfortable with that five minute jog one minute walk in that three minute jog three minute walk for five rounds then we're going to start saying that you can jog continuously and that's a 10 minute jog on level three straight and you're just going to do that one time Level three on day two is a little bit different. We're going six minute jog, two minute walk for three rounds. So, so you're getting 18 minutes of jogging and six uh, minutes of walking. Uh, and then once you feel comfortable with that, you just keep progressing down the sheet here to eventually the goal of this is where you can just do 20 minute jog straight and a 15 minute jog straight. If you get to that point in time, then if you desire, you can be doing sprints or interval training at that moment. If you desire just to keep in continuously progressing the distance or the time, then that's where the rule of 10% comes into play. So you want to keep, and this is the final thing that you must consider if you are a distance runner, is that no matter how frequently you run, 
no matter the speed of which you run at, the time or the distance, you want to progress at this rate no more 10% per week. So what, what you do is you got to keep track of everything. So for example, say you're going three days a week with running. First day, maybe you're getting five miles. Second day, maybe you're getting three miles. And in the fourth day, maybe you're getting four miles. So that 10% rule, you want to look at it from a weekly standpoint, as well as your highest total mileage. So from a weekly standpoint, this is 12 total miles. From a highest or longest run, it's five miles. So those are the two when we look at progressing, we don't want to progress any faster than 10%. When we progress, the next highest, we should not go any higher than 5.5 miles as our longest run day. And our total miles should not exceed 13.2. Now, this also doesn't mean that you need to progress that quickly, too. So you could progress at a rate that is slower than that, which is perfectly fine, perfectly normal, again, depending on your symptoms and prior level of capability. So again, though, that's, so that's what you want to be tracking if you are starting to go beyond this just 20 minute and 15 minute jog. I think that's necessary. You need to be able to jog for 20 minutes and 15 minutes comfortably before you ever start considering how far you are going um, and tracking your mileage from a daily and weekly total standpoint. But again, there's people who are trying to up their mileage quite significantly that I work with and get, you know, near anywhere from 60 to 100 miles a week. And there's others that I work with that are only trying to get to, you know, say 15 miles a week. So there's a wide range of people that I work with. And, and as you can imagine, you can't create one standardized program for everybody. So these are the rules. These are the concepts that you want to consider as you in your current circumstances are trying to progress and return back into running. Now, if you have any questions about your specific injury, this is where being part of our zero week links workout plan can be helpful. Helpful. It's our online group coaching plan where you get access to all our workouts, all our rehab programs for one low price. And you can message me through the app that is associated with that program when you join. And you can ask me questions and talk about your current circumstances, and I can give you suggested suggestions based upon your current circumstances. Now, if you want the ability to talk more face-to-face -face, uh, so you can get real-time feedback and go over a conversation in real time, we also have Zoom consultations that you can sign up for. If you're a member of the Zero Wink Links workout, uh, you'll have the ability to download all of the workout sheets, and there'll be a link to my calendar on those workouts and you can follow that link there or if you're just watching this through youtube you can head on over to sportsrehabexpert.com and join the zero week links workout plan so that you can message me or uh, you can send me an email greg at sportsrehabexpert.com if you are not part of that uh, workout plan and you want to just schedule a zoom consultation to go over your current injury scenario or how or find out more about how we can help you return back to running and get rid of pain and help you continue living an active lifestyle.